Hello, everyone. I'm really sorry about the delay. I um, just had a bit of a technical issue. Um, but thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, so the webinar today is with Tableau and we are joined by Daniel Naziria, who will be uh, discussing how to transform your business with data. Thank you, Amy. And hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining this webinar this afternoon. Um, my name is Daniel. I'm a solutions consultant at Tableau. And um, the purpose of today's meeting uh, and, and the webinar, in fact, is uh, I want to talk to you about Tableau, um, talk to you about the Tableau platform and how it can help you drive your organization with data. Um, I have a number of slides. I'm going to run through the slides really quickly, try to get to the uh, more exciting part, which is a demo, and spend most of our time looking at, at building up a, a dashboard and, and a story with, with some, some data sets. But before that, as I said, I um, just want to give you a bit of, of, of what the Tableau story is, what makes us unique, and why many customers, tens of thousands of organizations around the world, uh, chose Tableau as their enterprise analytics platform. So, um, to start this off, um, just, just to um, um, sort of getting started here, Tableau has always been focused on one thing, and that is the people. Uh, so, you know, we believe that people are your greatest asset and data. This data that you, you know, spend maybe hundreds or millions of pounds capturing, creating, cleaning and storing, um, it can be used to make your people even more valuable. So if you can get the data into the hands of those people who know the business, that's when the magic happens. Um, so we are 100% focused on helping those people see and understand your data. And the Tableau story is also one of technological innovation. Um, we started off by pioneering a new field of visual analytics. It's called uh, VizQL. And um, this is what creates a visual representation of your data right away in, in the Tableau UI. Um, gives you visual feedback as you analyze. And it is this innovation that made Tableau unique uh, makes data analysis possible for non-data scientists. Um, this first innovation that, that made you know, individuals do amazing things with data, uh, but you know, we, we knew the impact could be even be greater by you know, making that available at scale. So we designed and built an analytics platform around that solution to give individuals across you know, big, large organizations the same capabilities. And this is our commitment, uh, pure fact. Um, our commitment to R&D has been at greater than 25% of our revenue since 2010. So we constantly release new features and capabilities with, with uh, four releases per, per annual year. <clears throat> so um, that leads to a platform that people love. Here is you know, a number of, of our customers who are changing organizations uh, their internal organizations, I would say, by you know, allowing people to get hands-on with data. And this isn't one or two employees at a time. Some of the world's biggest organizations have deployed Tableau, and they have done that at scale. Um, they are empowering employees to, you know, in a secure way, drive large-scale data-driven decision-making, um, a few examples, Johnson & Johnson, they, they have deployed Tableau to almost 45,000 users. Exxon Mobile, um, they have over 40,000 active users, uh, as well as Wells Fargo. And then other customers, such as Comcast, Charles Schwab, Lenovo, they have over 10,000 users on, on the Tableau platform. Uh, Facebook and Apple are there almost with 5,000 users. So these customers are transforming how they let people operate and you know, realize full value of their people and their data at the same time. So this is when you might ask yourselves the question of how did those customers get there? Well, traditionally Tableau um, got discovered by an individual uh, or a team and they found quick value from, from Tableau and it continued to grow from there. But um, our biggest customers uh, who are seeing the most value of Tableau, they have, to, they have deployed it across departments at scale. So we have been working with more than 60,000 customers 
Um, and we have identified that five is the magic number. That is organizations that, that deploy Tableau to five or more departments, they experience higher level of adoption, engagement, and also return on investment. Uh, one of these being Jaguar Land Rover, a uh, Tableau customer. They are realizing the full value of their people and their data with, with Tableau. And this is what we hear from, from no, Jaguar in, in their own words. Uh, Tableau allowed them to em empower more people with data, even people who ordinarily wouldn't think of themselves as data people. Uh, it was embraced so quickly by the business that they armed 70% of the business with Tableau in nine months. And at this scale, a culture of analytics emerged and had a significant impact, not only on the business business's bottom line, but also in how employees are responding to this extra level of empowerment. So thinking about what Tableau is delivering, Yes, we may have started uh, many, many years ago as a desktop analytics tool, uh, but there is so much more in that now. Um, we understand that data is mission critical uh, to your organization. Um, this is why we have built a, a Tableau platform to ensure you have everything you need to empower people with data without putting that data or the organization at risk. So um, the platform provides that uh, depth and breadth of capabilities that you would need to ensure data can be deployed across the organization. This includes capabilities that ensure that the right data is made accessible with flexible data access and you know, data preparation capabilities in it. So, um, content and data governance features will keep the data in the right hands and you would be able to ensure users can find the right data and make decisions based on accurate and trusted data sets. We will also enable uh, pow powerful analytics capabilities and collaborative tools to bring that data to the center of every conversation. And Tableau even provides the flexibility to interact with your data in any way you would like. So this could be uh, on a desktop, um, it could be on a browser, uh, on a mobile device, uh, and you can even embed that into other applications if you like. So, and all of these capabilities are surround, surrounded by the right security protocols, uh, reliability, scalability, to make sure you can meet the needs of your business. My final slide, um, we started off you know, talking about people and how data can be used to uplift and supercharge your, your people. Um, but, but for that to happen, they need to actually be able to use the product. And the good news is people love using our product. Uh, a proof point of that is we have you know, the most engaged user base of any BI platform out there. Um, some of so some would say that maybe in the entire enterprise software space, our community is is uh, full of vibrant and passionate customers, um, and um, you know, we have a huge community of people who use Tableau. They love Tableau, and they they help to train, inform, to support, and inspire everyone else. Uh, we often hear this from our customers. The community will not allow you to fail, um, and that type of support is very useful. Uh, to all type of uh, Tableau customers, uh, whether you would be a business user or an analyst or a IT administrator. Um, this passion for the technology is something that can, can't be really easily fabricated. It has to be something that is born when people start to use that software. Um, so our community is really just a byproduct of our extreme focus and dedication on helping people see and understand their data. With that said, um, let's, let's move on and have a look at Tableau in action. Um, there's a couple of things I, I would like to draw your attention to. Um, you might want to get back to this later on and have a look at our website. If you want to know more about that Tableau platform that I just briefly uh, uh, shared with you on the screen, uh, go to tableau.com slash products and you can also read more about the individual products in our, our BI portfolio. 
And on the bottom of that page, you would also see the offerings and the pricing, which is all openly available on the website. The other thing that I want to mention is, uh, is the Tableau Biz Gallery. Um, it's pretty no, impossible for me during the short amount of time we have set for today to show you every possible biz that, that I could create with Tableau. So uh, to sort of get an idea of the art of the possible, uh, I would recommend you to have a look at the Tableau Biz Gallery. There's plenty of uploaded uh, examples on, on this page. And for the, those of you who want to get started and learning more about how to use Tableau, um, tableau.com slash learn. Um, there's plenty of free training, amazing free tra training videos, in fact, um, which will help you to get a kickstart. Um, and should you be interested, uh, there's more ways to learn, live training, classroom training, e-learning, plenty out there. Um, so we'll, that's available for you on, on the website as, as well. And the last thing is, um, by uh, end of this webinar, um, a, a follow-up email will come out to you uh, with a few suggested next actions. One will be the Tableau desktop download link. So if you want to try it out, there is a free 14-day trial on the website. Uh, please go ahead, uh, try that, uh, download it for yourselves and have a go. Um, that together with the learning videos and community online will, will help you to get a kickstart if you, if you would like so. So to the actual demo then, um, I have um, a um, set of, of uh, demo data that I'm going to use. Um, and what you see on the screen now is Tableau Online. This is a environment that I can access through the, the web browser. Uh, this could be your organization's uh, uh, Tableau um, available on the web. Um, and basically, this is where you, Users can share content, they can collaborate, they can consume dashboards, and so on. And I'm going to um, pretend uh, being a data scientist in a story of, of trying to figure out uh, uh, some, some interesting insights in a data set. Um, imagine myself being um, a, a data scientist in an organization, a global organization, and I'm sitting there on a, um, you know, uh, Thursday afternoon, like today, um, and our um, director of sales in the U.S., Kelly, calls me, and she's she's bringing me online and asks me to have a look at this dashboard. Kelly is seeing uh, an issue. Uh, so initially, on the first view here in the dashboard, uh, with uh, sales and profits over time, you see sales in the bars are fine, they are growing in the last three to six months, which is good. However, um, she's asking me to look at the profitability line. Uh, it is doubling off. And um, we have some background noise. If anyone is not on mute, can you please go on mute? Perfect, sorry for that everyone. So the story is um, profit is leveling off, as you can see with the green line. So that's an issue. And Kelly is also pointing out that some regions like East is looking particularly bad. And she's a bit in panic mode because she has to get on uh, and prepare for a meeting with the CEO. And she needs my answers, you know, pretty uh, rapidly. Uh, so she's begging me to find some answers for her and load that back to, to her um, uh, online access so she can have a look later on. So here we go. That's the story. Uh, that's how we get started. So I'm going to go ahead and download a copy of this workbook because I want to work, work with it on my desktop. So I'm moving on from the web browser to the desktop. I don't have to do this, by the way. If any one of you would be interested of knowing, um, there is a um, version of this um, on the website, on, on the web mode too, a web edit mode, so you can go in and start being creative and build um, dashboards and visualizations on the website. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and, and do that from the desktop today which is, by the way, um, the trial version you would download if you go ahead and, and, and do so. So I have a copy of, of this dashboard. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm um, going to open a new worksheet here. And as you can see, I can start from a blank canvas. 
I have access to the data sets within that workbook on the left-hand side, dimensions and measures. We're going to talk more about these as we go on. Um, but this is it. This is where I can start dragging and dropping things on the blank sheet and, and start being creative and ask questions out of the data. So let's go ahead and do something. Um, so questions I'm going to look at is why is profit leveling off and um, why is it particularly bad in the east region of the US? Let's, let's go ahead and look at sales. <clears throat> As you will see with the drag and drop in, in Tableau desktop, you get uh, aggregated uh, you know, data immediately. So by dropping that sum of sales on, on the columns here, I get immediately to see the summary of, of or the sum of the entire sales. Uh, and if I want to start breaking that down, I can use any of these dimensions on the left-hand side. So let's, let's have a look at the sales divided by different categories. So <clears throat> that looks okay to me. Uh, we are selling about the same amount in each category. Um, let's have a look at the profit instead, or actually adding that profit. So while we're say, selling sort of the same amount of um, amount within each category, the profit seems to be unusually low for furniture. So we can try to drill down into that and see what products are sort of causing that issue. And I can see immediately that there is uh, an issue with tables being particularly negative in, in profit. So to make that easy for Kelly to see, I can do a bit of you know, sorting and drag profits to uh, the color pane to really highlight that negativity. And here we go. This is my first finding. I'm going to call my uh, new worksheet table profits down. And I guess. What I want to say is the most natural way to tell a story in Tableau is to ask questions. Um, you narrate exploring to a finding, you label it, and let that lead to the next question. Um, let the questions lead you through a story, and you will eventually get there to, to answering the questions you want. So my next step is, you know, could this be a problem with one of the manufacturers? Um, why do I not um, duplicate these? And, Looked at that up. So I'm going to select and keep the tables. And I have manufacturers on the left hand side. I'm going to expand on all manufacturers. And this is really scary. Um, luckily, it's, it's just a demo. Um, but uh, manufacturers, almost all of them, are losing money in this case. So um, we, can, we can try and look up those two bottoms to begin with. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and create a set based on my worst offenders, BS and Chrome crop. And I'm going to, you're going to see why I'm doing that uh, in, in a short while. So I'm going to call this worst offenders. I'm going to also call my sheet worst offenders. Okay. So, um, I'm sort of, sort of getting to, to uh, some interesting insights here. So I have two really bad performers. Um, let's have a new look at the, uh, another part of the data. So I know I know that the tables are the issue now, but I haven't really figured out whether east of, of the US is, is that particularly bad or not. So uh, let's have a look at profitability again. Um, let's have a look at the different states. And if I don't know how I want to you know, plot that data, I uh, might as well have a look at the top right section here called show me and it's sort of giving me different options here so I can play around with some ideas and see you know, would it be okay to plot this as a bubble chart, maybe not, maybe a uh, area chart or just a table or even a map. And the map is really interesting, I'm going to keep the map in this case. So. Um, I'm seeing profitability being negative in different states, but now I'm actually still looking at all of my product categories. Uh, and this is when the set created earlier is, is particularly useful. I can drop that on the filters to focus on those two worst performers uh, for my manufacturers selling tables. And uh, here's my third finding. Um, yes, the East is, is looking worse, but um, the issue is not limited to only one region. Um, it seems to be across different parts of, of the country. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is to call this um, not only 
least and save that for later on. So as a matter of fact, within a few minutes, I have already answered those two initial questions. Tables are the problem. This is not just a East Coast problem. But uh, it doesn't really tell us yet why this is happening. Uh, so why do I not try to, to actually find the real answer to why profits are down? Go back to my view with the worst offenders. I'm going to keep those two worst performing manufacturers. Have a look at show me again. What can I do with this data? Again, looking at the different possible options here, um, Tableau is suggesting to look at a scatter plot. So I'm going to take that suggestion and try that out. I'm going to just adjust my shapes slightly to something that's easier for everyone to see on the WebEx. Here we go. So I've got my two manufacturers on, on the plot. Um, and I can change the level of detail here to all the customers that they've sold to. And this is a new finding. Um, I can see some outliers now. So if I hover over the marks, I can see um, that there is a customer, Dean. Uh, here's another one, Joseph. They are really sticking out here from, from the rest. Um, how is the trend line looking at uh, in this particular view? Negative. What if I would exclude my two worst offenders here? Uh, exclude them. Yes, that would have a significant effect on the overall trend of my profit. So that's good to know. Um, but I still need to answer the question of why the profit is so so uh, low or negative. Um, so let's go ahead and try a few ideas. Go back to my data pane. Um, I'm going to start asking some new questions. Dragging and dropping shape mode on color would make an interesting view because I can see sort of the distribution here between different shipping styles. So by clicking on each of them, I can see the distribution on the on the plot. Uh, and, and this is not really telling me anything. There is no part, particular trend in, in, in that story. So um, I might try something different, say segment, drop that on colors. So I have different customer segments. I have a consumer segment. Uh, there's a corporate segment and home office in this case. Again, nothing particularly interesting in that. Uh, let's try with discount instead. And uh, this is suddenly becoming a bit more interesting. Um, if you look at the, the lighter shades of, of the marks, um, this is more on the, on the upper part of the plot. And now hovering over them, you'll see that the discounts are zero or, or close to zero. But the further down, in the, um, towards the negative side of the profit axis, you'll see the darker colors indicating that the profits are more negative and the discounts are higher. So that's my, my, my next finding uh, to sort of say that discounts, discounting is an issue. Fantastic. So I've really answered that question now. And now I start to think about what, what sort of level of detail I, I need to go to to present that to Kelly. I mean, another thing I could do is to mark all of the negative ones, have a, a quick look at the level of detail, and sort of list all of those customers who received a really high discount. Um, additionally, I could right click on this and say duplicate. Apologies, I'm going to go back one step and do that again because I want to duplicate as a crosstab. This will give me um, a detailed table of, of all of those uh, data data marks in, in the plot. Good. So I've, I've sort of got to the end of, of answering all of the questions I had. What I want to do is now to start thinking about how, how I'm going to share that back to Kelly and, and sort of uh, make up a story for Kelly to, to quickly understand from. Um, I'm going to start off with creating a dashboard. Um, I have access to all of the plots I've, I've created earlier. So I'm going to drag on the tables, tables here. Um, I can drag on other things. Let's add uh, discounting. Um, go ahead with a map. And as a matter of fact, I want to add details instead here. Right. Um, let's get rid of 
based on the site and go full screen so that everyone can see that easier on, on the WebEx. So this is, this is a fully functional dashboard now. And if I want to use any of my um, charts as a filter, I can switch that, that uh, uh, filter button on quickly from here. What makes it interesting is now that by seeing the outliers or any of the marks on my, my scatter plot, I can make a selection, I can see where it is located, where that customer is located on the map, and also get the details from, from the table. So this would potentially be useful for um, Kelly when she's in a meeting and want to explore ways of, of um, uh, rectifying the issues that, that have been discovered. The other thing I want to do is to create a story. And the story allows me to actually talk to Kelly and, and explain to her um, what my findings are. So let's go ahead and, and do a story. So I'm going to go ahead and, and drag on my tables. I'm going to give this a description saying tables are losing money. Okay, um, and to Kelly's other question, no Kelly, it is not just one region. And other thing, the final thing I'm going to share with Kelly is the dashboard, so she can have a look herself, because the problem is discounting behavior. Fine. So I'm happy with that. I'm going to call this story discounting. Now think about where I got this dashboard from. It was on the web. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and publish this back to Kelly now. Um, it's asking me to log into my Tableau online. So I'm going to quickly do that. I need to choose a site. Oops, I need to type my password. Let's try that and see. Apologies for this. I thought I was already logged in. That's apparently not the case. Right. So I've logged into uh, my Tableau server now from the desktop, which allows me to start publishing content back to the server. So um, Think about where, where that, that uh, dashboard came from. It was from a location on the server where everyone had access to it. It was a project room called Sales All. But what I want to do with this particular story, because it's custom made for Kelly, is to publish it back to a location where only Kelly can see it. So that project room is called Kelly's Sandbox. Um, I'm going to also give that um, public, published story a name, so I'm going to call it Discounting is uh, the issue, and from the things I can publish, I'm going to pick only the discounting story. Here we go. So I want to publish that. It takes a few seconds. Uh, what happens next is that um, I will be routed back to the server location. So I'm done with my, my work, actually, for Kelly. Uh, now, imagine this being Kelly now. Um, having a look at her sandbox. She's getting to see uh, the work that I have published. Um, so she can see owner is Daniel. Uh, it was published uh, just minutes ago. Uh, she will start to have a quick view on this, of this. And she can sort of, you know, have a look through the whole story. So she will read, tables are losing money, okay? Um, it is not just one region. She can see that it's, it's across the entire state, uh, so country, and finally, the problem is discounting behavior. And if she's curious enough, she will click on any of these customers on the, on the, on the scatter plot to actually see where they're coming from uh, in terms of location and also some details around uh, the performance. So that takes me to the end of my um, demonstration. Um, I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, that is a very, say, quick um, demonstration of, of some of those capabilities that you will find uh, with Tableau. And it's all about asking questions and working with data in a very intuitive way um, to sort of get to interesting insights. Um, 
couple of other things. Um, you can obviously start and um, typing in any questions you will have in um, in the in the questions section, as Amy mentioned earlier. Uh, once you're doing that, I'm going to just briefly uh, mention a few other things. Um, there is a few other things you can do uh, if you want to get started. So if you download uh, a version of Tableau uh, desktop uh, with a 14-day trial, um, you will I'll just show you how you get started easily. Uh, helps you on the steps. I'm going to start up a new Tableau desktop. So this is the piece of software you're going to install if you download the trial. Um, it's going to look like this. It's all blank and you need to sort of uh, start thinking about where you, know, where you want to get your data from. So uh, to connect to data, you have a number of different options. Uh, it's good that you see this once before you try to do it again yourselves. Um, if you have some data on, on, on Excel or text file CSV, this is where you go and, and sort of you know browse to it. So you can click on Microsoft Excel. Uh, takes you to uh, you know wherever location where you have some data. I'm going to try and find an interesting data set for you. Um, bear with me. So go to my Tableau repository, data sources. And here's an Excel file. So if you find an Excel file you're, and you want to work with it, try connecting to it. What happens after that is that you will get to this um, um, data source um, page in Tableau Desktop. You will see the uh, individual uh, tables from your Excel file on the left-hand side. You can drag on something like orders. You get to preview the data uh, in the second half of the page. And if you're happy with that, Click on sheet one in the bottom left of the page and get started. You can start doing what I did earlier. Um, Tableau will do certain things easily for you. So if you have um, so things like um, city names or country names, it will potentially you know, find out that this is you know, automatically see that it has a geographical role, like a country or region. But you can also set that yourself if you want. The same comes with, with dates, it will automatically see that it is a date um, and, and so on. So it helps you to understand your data better and you can then go ahead and start visualizing that data in the same way that I did. And you can see that story that I created earlier. So it's really easy to get started if you like. Okay. Um, can see if Amy can help me to see if there are any questions. Hello, yes. We've managed to sort the technical issue, <laughs> so we're Great. fine. Um, sorry about that. Um, we do have some questions actually. Let me just read them out for you. Um, so the first one uh, is asked about uh, a child demo um, option with full functionality. Um, yes, uh, if you tick the, the um, tick box at the end, we'll get back to your further details on that one. Um, Next question uh, for you, Daniel. Um, it says, what makes Tableau different from other softwares in the market, e.g. Alteryx? All right, okay. Um, I think we're talking about a very, I mean, in that particular case with Alteryx, so it's a partner of Tableau and it's a very different solution. Uh, so it's not a like-for-like -like comparison. It's, it's a very difficult one, actually, to compare. Uh, and, and they can work really well with each other at the same time. Um, in general, I would say there's uh, many different USBs. My personal favorite is the time to insight, uh, to actually get hands-on with data and very very easily ask those questions, to, to drag and drop, to, to try different ideas, and very quickly with the built-in functionalities of Tableau, get really in-depth with your analysis, to understand the data, to ask questions, like no other tool potentially could, could provide you with. Uh, thanks, Daniel. So there's another question here. Um, it says, does Tableau have a database or does it just sit on top of existing databases or data warehouses? It's an excellent question. Um, you, you have both options. So I mean, whether, whether that, wherever that data sits, you can uh, connect to it with a live connection, which essentially means that uh, when you're working with data and you're dragging, dropping, and asking questions from a dashboard, that you're querying that data set live. 
Uh, for example, a SQL database can sit in the back background and Tableau can sit on the top and query that database directly. Um, that is usually for cases where a data source is performant enough and quick enough to respond to your answers. Alternatively, you can look at extracting the data and, and storing it in a Tableau format. Um, that sort of becomes your own uh, data, uh, data base or data layer of, of Tableau uh, in, in Tableau format that performs really quickly and easily in, in, uh, uh, in memory. So when it comes to extract, it's, it's an in-memory question. Performance is really quick, and you can extract the data and, and store it in a way that Tableau reads off really well and quickly. So you have both options. It's about performance. It's about your preferences and use case. OK, thank you. Um, no more questions at the moment. Um, if you do have any more questions, there's the questions um, box in the, the right-hand panel. Um, if you do have any, type those in there and I will read those out for Daniel. Just wait a minute or so. There's also our email address on the page just in front of you. Um, so if you would like to submit any outside of the webinar, um, you're more than welcome to. Our email address is there and then our phone number as well. And um, I will send you all the recording as well tomorrow. So... I think that's it for the questions. So thank you everyone for joining the webinar today. I really hope you found it valuable and thank you so much, Daniel, for presenting. Um, as mentioned at the beginning, I'll send you all a link to the slides and please fill out the critique form for us. We'd really appreciate that. Um, and enjoy the rest of your afternoon. Thank you.